doing for Thanksgiving? And I'm going to go. Oh, we already talked about it. Um, on Thursday, November the 28th, here at Gethsemane, they are having at 10 a.m. a short service and then at noon a full-blown Thanksgiving dinner. And everybody is invited. Okay, so that's Thursday <laughs> at noon here. Are you going to be here? And No, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, and they're going to have to-go boxes so that you can take a meal home with you oh. because on that day Yay. we will not have sack lunches. Who wants a sack lunch when you can have turkey and dressing? Right. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just saying. So, and then also while you're there, um, instead of doing junk in the trunk, Gethsemane's going to do alms to palms or alms to four palms, whatever their uh, their version of junk in the trunk. So alms you'll be able palms. to get lunch, trunk filled, and dinner all in one fell swoop. Okay, then United Bible Community, our Thanksgiving meal, a whole nother big shindig, will be on Saturday inside the whole kit and caboodle. So you'll get to eat at least two Thanksgiving. Thanks, good Thanksgiving meals. So I love the divide and conquer that we have going on. Um, so that's at four o'clock regular time, just like regular service. And then um, we will open the doors, thank you, at 3.30. And then we will um, begin all of our festivities at four on Saturday. So there's, I'm going to put these over here. Please invite your friends. We're going to plan for a hundred people. We usually have about, I mean, I think last year we had 93 or something. So um, invite your friends. We don't want anybody to miss out. So there's extras laying right here so that you can um, take one to a friend. <laughs> okay, um, so that will be November the 30th, <clears throat> then the following movie night, so much the following Friday is December the 6th, great. okay, that's our, our Christmas movie night, it's the first time we've had a movie night in December, we're going to do something fun, I don't know what, but something, like hot cocoa, I mean Christmas something, we'll figure something fun out. Christmas. I don't know what it'll be, but mark my words, it'll be fun. Um, and then the, and then that's on a Friday. Then the next Saturday, which is December the seventh, when our breakfast starts. Okay, so every Saturday morning for December, January, February, and March, winter breakfast on Saturday mornings will be inside, starting at 9 a.m. Doors open at eight. So lots and lots. We just love to eat around this place. <laughs> Uh, you know, Jesus broke bread all the time and he had his last supper with his disciples and then the Baptist fixed it by every time you get together you have to eat and so we just kind of adopted that so it's all about eating. Eating spiritually and eating physically. Um, and then so back a little bit more current. Next week we'll have sack lunches at the library on Monday at 2.30 and then regular sack lunches on Thursday. <clears throat> and then church next Saturday too. There is no news on the Christ before us for Monday night yet. At some point it will happen. I don't know what it will be, but at some point it will happen. Um, okay, needs list. We had a problem with the needs list this past week. I went and I looked at the folder, I mean the clipboard. Everybody know what the needs list is? Okay, yes, right here, looks like this. Yes, um, and I went and looked at it and there were two lines filled out. Never in our four years down here have only two people requested something. Everybody's got one of me? No. So, I don't know it. what happened to it. I know brother back there wrote the shoes down. So, I don't know what happened to that paper. I don't know if the wind caught it and blew it away or what. I oh, dug through no. everything and I found that paper nowhere. <laughs> So, if you wrote something on the week on the list last week, yes, yes. I need you to write it on the week this week All because right. the paper disappeared, oh, like vanished man. in the thin air. Unless you gave me a list on Thursday with sack lunches, and then I have all that. Okay. We gotta worry about chemicals so. too. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna talk about this for a minute right here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It says items and clothing size. 
I cannot guess what size shoe you wear. Yeah. I cannot guess what size <laughs> pants you wear. If you put something like double A batteries, tent? I cannot guess tent? how many your flashlight holds. Man. Um, if you need, um, we had somebody put a bicycle chain on here. Sure. I don't know what size bike you ride. Don't too much fucking good. Uh, so, help me help you. Show me the money. It reminded me of that movie all of a sudden. <laughs> so, help me help you by giving me some information that I can fill these needs lists, that Jesus can fill the needs list. And then one more favor, write legibly. Sometimes it's fun trying to figure out what people said. I'm like, I don't know what a flat bush sponge lot, sponge lint is. I don't know what a flat bush sponge lint is. A flat bush tent. Okay, there you go. I was hoping for a tent. Okay, well, there you go. Let me get your handwriting, brother, because yes, ma'am. I should have been a doctor myself, you know. Yeah. So, um, and when it's cold, it's hard to write, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, help me help you on the needs list. Um, and then on. Okay. So one more thing, my sack lunches. Is. You know, we noticed this past my week, day. sack my lunches. Um, when we we're doing sack lunches and junk in the trunk, it gets dark earlier because it's the daylight saving time and it's winter and the days are shorter and whatever. Mm -hmm. So for the winter time, we're going to start going inside so that there's daylight, so you can see what you're eating, and then it won't be quite as dark and it won't be quite as cool. So that was a lot of announcements, wasn't it? Mm. Do I remember all those announcements? Okay. Yep. Thanks, Did you say? Thank you. Thank you. Um, on Thursdays. On Thursdays, we're going to start going in on Thursday nights. Now, that's a good point, too. When it's cold, we're going to be inside for Saturday, too, okay? Um, when it's cold, somebody texted me last week and said, Are we going to be inside? I said, It's 61 degrees. No, we're not going inside. <laughs> So, we enjoy being outside, but when it's cold, we'll be inside. So don't ever let that be a deterrent about whether you're going to come or not. Know that if it's chilly, not only will we be inside, but we'll be having coffee. Yay. It's chilly coffee. Yes, so, um, all that said, all that said, um, <laughs> Let's pray first. Father, <coughs> we need you today. I personally thank you for our family. I thank you for our community that we have here. I thank you that you have blessed us with each other. And I thank you that not only have you blessed us with each other, but you have blessed us with your son. You have blessed us with your love. You've blessed us with an opportunity for eternity with you. I thank you that you have provided so much for us when really and truly all we all deserve is hell. <coughs> I thank you that your word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, that it gives us all the answers that we need for life. And not just a life to eat by, but a life that is abundant. Abundant, overflowing with blessings. Abba, Father, as I open this word today, will you please speak through me to us? Will you speak life into us? Will you give us um, spiritual meaning today? And we will just walk away changed. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, part of one of the reasons I said I'd get to it in a second part of the one of the reasons that we're um, not having Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday like we did last year um, besides divide and conquer so that you get a Thursday dinner and a Saturday full-blown dinner um, my mother passed away last Sunday um, and it was very unexpected but not a surprise she was um, on Monday she would have been 84 years old and um, she has seen a lot in her life. She saw cars and electricity 
and indoor plumbing and television and just microwaves. I remember when we got a microwave in 1976 and, and we were like talking to the town and the neighbors because nobody else had a microwave and, and just a lot of things my mom got to see all her days growing up. She was one of nine children born before World War I, born in the time of Great Depression. They lived on a farm. Her dad was a farmer. She told me one time that there was a season that all they had to eat was pickles because they grew cucumbers there at their farm. And while she saw a lot in her life, last Sunday was the greatest event that she will ever see in her entire life. Because when she quit breathing here, she stepped into the presence of Jesus. And then got to be reunited with my dad after 16 years. And um, Monday I was supposed to go to my best friend growing up. We've been friends for 50 years. Um, her dad passed away last week. And his funeral was supposed his funeral was Monday. And I was supposed to be driving to East Texas to go to his funeral and instead I was processing business for my mom. Um, so y'all pray for our family. It was again a shock but not a surprise. And she left instantly, which is a blessing. Okay? She <laughs> left instantly. Like she was gone before she hit the ground. And scripture tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when she breathed her last here, she opened her eyes and said hello to Jesus there. And that is truly a blessing. So today we don't have any birthdays. Um, on, in our community this week, but my mom's birthday was Monday, and so she loved roses. So we have a birthday cake for my mom today. Amen. She we had a long-standing family joke that anytime she'd do something for us, she'd say, "That's going to cost you a dozen roses," <laughs> and then and then she would do something that's going to cost you a dozen roses. And so years ago, I joked with her and I said, "I'm just going to have to bury you in Tyler because I owe you way too many roses." And uh, <clears throat> And so we were talking about that memory this past week. And Brittany, my middle daughter, that's the mom of the four that comes with us often, said, are you kidding? I owe Granny so many roses, she downgraded me to carnations because the roses are so expensive. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so we're having, and then Sherry's mom, who passed this year too, her birthday is the 15th. 14th. 14th. So this is, this is mom's birthday today. All moms. <laughs> Um, or really anybody that's not here that you want to celebrate. Or just that you like cake. We like to eat. Remember, we like to eat around here. So, um, Sister Mary. so that's why I'm not going to be here Thanksgiving. I'm going to be planning my mom's celebration of life service. Yes. Um, today is my, um, my daughter's birthday. She would have been on 11. someone that you love it's hard to you know it's a blessing my mom oh let me tell you something else too on Monday night I went and spent the night at Brittany's house so that she could drive to see my son who was alone he's in his last two weeks of school college he's gonna be graduating and so she didn't want him to be alone so I spent the night at her house before I went to sleep I asked the Lord to give me a dream about my mom and then I went to sleep and just really <coughs> forgot all about it um, then the next day, 
my friend sent me a text and said, I had a dream about your mom last night. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. He sent it to the wrong address, though. I'm the one that asked for it. I was at Brittany's house. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have been spending the night at your house. Anyway, so um, she called me to share with me what the dream was. And um, she was with me and my kids. We were at my daughter's house, and my mom died. And she came back to life. And she died. And she came back to life. And she died. And she came back to life. And she said, I'm not coming back because it's not anything that you would understand, but I don't want to come back. And then she left. Talk about comfort. Talk about comfort knowing that heaven, the key to be present with the Lord, to be present with our Father that created us is way more than we can ever imagine. Um, one of the old fathers in the faith, his name is Smith Wigglesworth. Um, he was a pretty rough guy around the edges and he was blessed with the ability to bring people back from the dead. Um, which is one of the things that as a believer in Christ we should do. Mark 16, 15 says that these signs follow them that believe that they will cast out demons, they will heal the blind, they will heal the sick, they will raise the dead. And so, um, but he brought someone back to life that was angry with him because they didn't want to come back. <coughs> so, um, they really ought to say something. It's rough for those of us that are left behind. But it is what it is. It um, was never, ever, ever God's intention for humanity to decay, for humanity to suffer with sickness and disease, for humanity to die. We were not created to be like that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I think that the Lord's got something great to tell us. And I know that probably y'all sitting down, I'm going to hold these up, okay? <clears throat> More than one person says, what are you doing with cans of vegetables? Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so we're at the grocery store, all right? Um, <coughs> hey, John, pay attention. Well, don't keep others from paying attention, too. We're at the grocery store and we're on the vet canned vegetable aisle and we've got a whole shelf full of green beans. And right beside it, we have a whole shelf full of corn. And then sitting right there in the middle is a can with no label on it. In between the green bean shelf and in between the corn shelf is a can that is not very well described. Okay, so we know that Libby's, who made this can of green beans, put this label on it to tell us what? Green beans. Green beans. There's green beans. What's on the inside of it? Green beans. It told us that this can is filled with green beans. And then Sprouts made this can and put a label on it that says this can has corn on the inside of it. So on the outside is a label given to it by the manufacturer that tells us what's on the inside of it. Now we have a problem. Because this can doesn't have a label on it. Either the manufacturer failed or um, or the, it came off or whatever. One time, commercial. Um, one of my friends that got married way back in the day, like when we were college age, um, she got in all of her apartments set up and getting everything ready for when they got married, went on their honeymoon, and came back, and we snuck into her apartment and we took all the labels off all of the food in her house. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It was fun. We got in a lot of trouble for it, but it was fun. <laughs> anyway, so this can has nothing written on it, so therefore I don't know what's on the inside of it. Peace. Be huh? Peace. No. Peace. <laughs> um, actually, someone has written on the top. Corn. No. It says refried beans. Yes, it does. But I'm trying to I'm just think it's misspelled. But anyway, refried beans. So this says someone has taken the opportunity to tell everybody else around, even though there's no label on it, what's on the inside. Refried beans. Now here's the problem. 
it's actually the least. Refried beans don't shake. Yeah. Right. Right. So on the inside of this can, even though someone's written refried beans on it, it's not refried beans. Now, I happen to have had more than one can of these, and I've opened them, and it's pinto beans. And we can make refried beans out of it, but in its form, like this, it's not refried beans. It's not green beans. It's not corn. It's missing the label, and even though someone wrote on it, it's still not what's on the inside. So y'all hang on to that because we're going to talk about and apply that. In Genesis 1. It's really hard to have a, an arm I can't. Right, because when you talk with your hands, you talk with your hands, you know. I, I, can, I can move my hand. Just not my whole arm. And I... This is kind of animated. This is very animated. <laughs> um, okay, Genesis 1 and 26 says this. Then God oh. said, let us, talking to the Father, I mean the Father said to the Son and the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of heaven, over the livestock and over all the earth, um, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then we move forward to chapter 2 real quick. Who is power? Um, chapter 2, verse 7 says this. People come home. How are you? What are you telling me for? And then the Lord God formed the man from dust, from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. So, man should have a label on it that says what's on the inside of it by the manufacturer that says God likeness created in God's image to look like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not supposed to look like refried beans, or not supposed to not sound like refried beans, not to be misleading. We should look like the Father said, create them in our image, let's make them, and he did. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna bounce around, and this isn't, I don't normally bounce around a lot, but that's what Jesus said we're gonna do today. Colossians 3, starting in verse 1. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. And in these, you two once walked. You were living in them, were, not now, were. But now, meaning now, you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Being renewed, born again, being transformed, Romans 12 says that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind being transformed into the likeness, into the image of the Creator. A can with a label on it. <coughs> that says, when somebody sees me, they see from me, my fruit of my life, what lives inside of me. What comes up out of my mouth, the psalmist says that we're to guard our hearts for from it the abundance of life flows. Whatever comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. 
anger, wrath, malice, filthy talk. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Having put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Jew or Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then. So now we're going to look at what the labels should look like. There should be ingredients on this label. In this can of green beans, it says that there are green beans and water and salt. It would be weird if we looked on this label and it said green beans here but on the back it said ingredients corn <laughs> slimy worms <laughs> and dirt okay? that's not according to the label what's supposed to be on the inside that matches the label put on then as God's chosen ones holy and beloved compassionate hearts kindness humility meekness and patience bearing with one another and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. So we have a can that's got a manufacturer that should have a label on it that tells us what's on the inside of it with a list of ingredients that says, here I am, my name is Mary, I'm born again, I am God's adopted heir, I've been crucified with Christ, so I don't live anymore, but it's Christ that lives in me, and I live because he died for me. And in that, the fruit of my life shows that I walk the walk, I talk the talk, when my mouth opens, Jesus comes out, and I have put on the new self. I have taken my life and matched it to the ingredient label that the Creator has made for me, born in His likeness, okay? Now, John 15, 5, or John 15, one of my very favorite scriptures, so much so that I have John 15, 5 actually tattooed on my leg. But it says this, talking about the fruit. Jesus is talking its red letters. If you need something to read, just read the red letters. If you just read the red letters, your life will change. Um, red letters, Jesus talking. He says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not oh. bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. <coughs> Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, not just fruit, much fruit, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. We bear fruit so that the label on our life matches the ingredients and people can look at it and go, yep, she's a can of green beans. Uh, or whatever. You said beans. I said green beans. Um, so, but this, my Father, is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another yeah. as I have loved you. Just like the last scripture we read, above all else, we wrap it all together with love. We put the label of love on it. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends, for that I have heard. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask in the father, in the name of the father, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. So we're supposed to look like love. We're created in the image of God. And we know over and over and over, Scripture says that God is love. Not that God loves, that He is love. He is love. Not that that's His character trait. That's what He is. He is love. So if we are to look like the Father, then the label for our lives should be love. We are to look like Him, and He is that. Okay, Matthew. <coughs> <coughs> Matthew uh, chapter 13 <coughs> starting in verse 24 now I'm going to throw this out because we've talked about this a billion times we do not get born again we do not get saved so that we go to heaven if that were the case then anybody that said a prayer of salvation that asked to surrender their life to Jesus, then immediately they would be gone. That's not the way it works. That's not the purpose. The purpose is so that the kingdom of heaven can come dwell in us so that we can share the hope that lives in us so that others won't be lost. And then at some point, the bonus is that we get to go there. And it's not that we're going to heaven. The bonus is we're going to go be with the Father. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Will you go take care of all that popping over there? <clears throat> all right. Chapter 13, verse 24. Jesus is talking. He put another parable before them saying, The kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go gather them? But he said, No. Lest in gathering the weeds, you uproot the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So you're like, well, what on earth does all that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked because Jesus went on to tell us. Starting in verse 36. And then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, and don't feel bad if you don't get the stuff that Jesus says, because even his disciples came to him all the time and said, what the heck are you talking about? So this is one of those times. They came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. So he answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. So who's the son of man? Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus Christ. You know why he's called Son of Man, not Son of God? Because he was born from ever since he was born, he was he was also a man, but he was just like God. So that's why he's actually known as the Son of Man, because he was he knew what it feels like to actually be alone, just like man, and uh, actually not. Which is means he actually know. That's why he mainly when he got cut, he bled. He got cut, he bled, yeah. he, he got bled. 
He had he to go through puberty just like the rest of us. Yep. Okay. So he, he got so cold. He, made, he sneezed. <laughs> yeah. So he was son of God, but when he left his throne and became a human, he was son of man. He was fully God and fully man. And then commercial. So he did everything that he did. He walked on water. He raised the dead, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf ear. Everything that he did, not any of it was God. It was all Jesus, the man. Yep. He did it in right standing with the Father, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't do any miracles until he got baptized in the River Jordan, and the heavens opened up, and the dove descended as the Holy Spirit, and landed on him, and the Father said, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. And he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, and he walked out his days in right standing. He did everything the Father asked him to do. And in right standing, the Holy Spirit empowered him to do all those things that we're supposed to be doing as we walk in right standing, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. And just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who has he who has ears, let him hear. Then he goes on, because I want you to see for a can with a label around it from the manufacturer that's got an ingredient list that's got a purpose, and the purpose is to allow the kingdom of heaven to dwell in us. That's part of our ingredient list. Now I want to show you that it's worth it. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up, then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. He found something that's irreplaceable. He found something of such great value, he will give any and everything away to have this, the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, for those of us that are slow, thank goodness Jesus is patient. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. And in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we're a can with a label from the manufacturer with ingredients, with a purpose <coughs> that is worth it. <coughs> so why did Jesus have to come and do what he did? Why can't we just put the label on ourselves and call our own ingredients? Because it wouldn't make any sense. Because it wouldn't make any sense. That's a good answer. And we're not the manufacturer. But someone that wasn't the manufacturer took this can and wrote refried beans on it. The problem is, it's not refried beans. So the world wrote on my life, addiction and adultery and self-hate and attempted suicide and fornication and babies out of wedlock and codependency, and addiction relationship, addiction of all kinds. But that that was written on my life is not who I am. Because Jesus came for two purposes and two purposes only, Galatians 4. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to 
start in 23. I mean in 3. Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. You know what justified means? Justified in the eyes of God means just as if I'd never sinned. I exchanged my foul for his righteous, just as if I'd never sinned justified by faith but now that faith has come we are no longer under a guardian for in Christ Jesus we are all sons of God through faith for as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ like you put on a label on a can you put on Christ you put on the label so the world knows who you are who you belong to what team you're on what ingredients you have, what you stand for, what is your purpose, there is no doubt. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither no male and female, for you are all one in Christ. And if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. I mean that the air, like not the air we breathe, but the heir to the throne. As long as he is a child is no different than a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. Refried beans. Enslaved to refried bean label. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father! So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. And the label on my life says child to the one true king. And the ingredients begin with, you know how the very first ingredients that's listed is the one that there's the most of? The first ingredient on my label for life is love. And I was redeemed, which means I was bought back at a price that was the original value, the original design. Jesus came and bought me back and restored to me my original identity that was lost. That said, refried beans? But it's obviously not. I'm not an addict. I am not a codependent. I am not an adulterer. I am not a hater. I am not a liar. I am not a thief. I am not any of those things. Because when Jesus redeemed me, he restored to me my identity. And when he restored to me my identity, all those things were scratched off my label. And the label says, child of God. So his two purposes are this. He came to redeem us then he came to give us sonship, to restore us to the place that we're supposed to be. In the beginning, God created humanity in his image to be his kid, to walk with him in the garden in the cool of the day and have a relationship with him. And then when sin entered in, that relationship was stopped. It was cut off. And somebody wrote refried beans on our life and stole our label. And I'm here to tell you, by the manufacturer's design, you can have that label back. When my mom stepped into eternity, her label was made perfect. I was uh, working on paperwork and um, with my oldest daughter, we had to list all this stuff and working on her death certificate and it says height and weight and I was like mom's five six and she was like no she's not 
She's 4'10". I said, well, she used to be 5'6". Her ID says she's 5'6", but she stood like this. So now she's 4'10". So when she stepped into the throne room, she became 5'6 again. No congestive heart failure. No symptoms of any physical problems. Her label was made perfect by the King of Kings who came specifically to redeem us and restore us to a proper relationship as a son or a daughter. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that you are so amazing that you never got lost. We didn't find you. You found us. And that you loved us enough to provide us with the opportunity to relabel our life, to change the ingredients in our life that used to define us when we were lost sons and daughters. Will you take Holy Spirit, everyone here, this, everyone that's here today, and hunt them down, invade their life, invade their dreams, invade conversations, invade billboards, invade music, invade every avenue that comes into them so that they can see what it's like to be a child to the one true king. I thank you that when you restored us, you didn't leave us with scars, you made us new. That you give us a new heart and a new mind and a new walk and a new opportunity to live for you. Thank you that the kingdom of heaven comes to dwell in us, that inside us is the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that brings hope to a dying world. May when we open our mouth, that hope come out. Thank you, Father, for grace and mercy and forgiveness and unconditional love and sobriety and freedom and just the love that you give us. Use us to show that to other people. Show us what we can be with your label on our life. We love you and we praise you. Thank you for our food today. May it nourish our bodies the way the word has nourished our souls. Thank you for the needs list. We are in awe of you for what you have done for us. Bless us, Lord, as we live to bless you. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' powerful name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.